Okay, so today we are working on periodic motion and complex numbers. Okay, and a couple things just to make note of, okay? So complex numbers are often used to describe periodic motion given by sinusoidal functions. So if you think about electronics and they're moving by waves, we have to be able to add and subtract waves of sine functions. And so the frequency of a sinusoidal function is the number of cycles it goes through each time unit. So if t is the period of the function, the frequency is 1 over t. And if you take in physics, that should be a familiar concept to you. Complex numbers can be used to add two sine function functions with the same period or the same frequency. So let's consider this scenario here. Okay, it's not electronics, but it's waves nonetheless. So imagine Martin's in a large lake, he's swimming, and the waves are one foot high, and the height of the waves are modeled by this particular function f of x equals sine x, or x is the time in minutes. So this is minutes, and the waves are coming. The magnitude is one, uh, so the height is one, the amplitude is one, so the height is the waves are one as we go through. And you can picture the waves coming up and down, up and down, up and down. A go-fast boat is also on the lake creating waves that are two feet high, modeled by this function here. So here's the amplitude of the wave created by the, the go-fast boat and the sine of x plus pi by 2. And so notice they both have the same period or frequency because the b value in front here is 1, the b value in front here is 1, but this one's been shifted off by a factor of pi by 2. For Martin who's swimming, the waves combine together creating this new model, h which is g and f together. And note we're going to be using radians. So using Desmos, we're going to sketch all of them. And so I've taken the liberty, that the red curve is f of x, the sine of the function, and the blue curve is the, the go fast boat. And so imagine we're adding these, because this point here is going to add the red part plus the blue part together. So it's going to be a point up here. This point, which is zero, will have to go through here. And so it's adding all these values together and sometimes it adds to get larger, sometimes they subtract. And this is what combined looks like. How the graphs are combined when they cancel each other out as they go. And so this is the height, the, lot, the trough, and so on and so forth. The period is the same. It's the height and the amplitude shift that changes when you combine the blue and the red curve. So there's the setup of our graph. And here's a graph that you can include make it all nice and fancy. Okay, so consider the imaginary number num z1 equals cis x and z2 is 2 cis x plus pi by 2. Note that they're coming from here. And the connection to f and g. All right, so what I'm recognizing is that if I take z1, which I know is cosine x plus i sine x, if I take the imaginary part of z1, that is just simply sine x. Similarly, if I take the imaginary part of z2, I get 2 sine x plus pi by 2. And so now this is in polar form, but I can also come along and then put these in Euler form as well. I know this can go in Euler form. If I look for the imaginary part of Z1 in Euler form, it's going to be the imaginary part of the number R, which is 1, E, to the I, X. And if I look at the imaginary part of Z2 in Euler form as an exponent, I'm going to get um, the imaginary part of the number 2, r is 2, e to the i, x plus pi by 2, which I know is the imaginary part of 2, e to the i, x, if I do receive that, but because it's adding exponents, it's the same as multiplying times e to the i, pi by 2. So I know this is the imaginary, this is the same as g of x, if I only look at the imaginary part. And this is the same as f of x, if I only look at the imaginary part. So, when I come along and I'm going to 
add these two functions together, I want to do this. So I know that h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, which I also know is the imaginary part of e i x, which is f of x, plus the imaginary part of 2 e i x times e i pi i. Now, if you think about adding imaginary numbers, right, if it's a plus b i plus c plus d i, I can just take these imaginary parts and go, oh, c plus d i. I'm looking at the imaginary part. So what, because of that, I can just consider the imaginary part of these numbers added together, 2 e i the x times e i to the pi by 2. But I also notice it's the imaginary part, and I gotta keep the imaginary part there. I can factor out e to the i x from both terms, e to the i x, and I'm left with 1 plus 2 e to the i pi by 2. And so h, this is what h equals, the imaginary part of this. Now it says use your GDC to write this part here. This is the same in exponential form. Now note, you must input the angle as a radian. So whatever your mode is, whether this is radian or degree here, your calculator believes it's being put in as a radian. By changing radian degree, your output could be given as a radian or a degree, depending upon what you choose. That's what is being changed here. All right, so I will take that and I'm going to put this into my calculator. One plus two e to the i pi divide 2, and I get this crazy number here. I get the imaginary, I get mm. 1 plus 2 e i pi i is equal to 2.24 e to the 1.107 i, 1.107 i. And so, I know if I substitute that, I know that h of x is equal to the imaginary part of e to the i x times 2.24 e to the i 1.11 i, if I round this. Okay, if this is true, I can pull these two numbers together. This is the same thing as saying the imaginary part of E, oh no, let me write that as 2.24, 2.24 E to the I. If I put these together, it's X plus 1.1 using my exponent properties. Hence, therefore, H of X is the imaginary part of that number, which is the sine part, which is equal to approximately 2.24, which is the R value, sine x plus 1.11. So, what is the maximum height of the wave? Well, the maximum height of the wave is going to be 2.24, and it's been shifted, it happens, it shifts 1.11. If I look at my graph here, I can clearly see this maximum is 2.24. And so this is how we use imaginary numbers to add sine curves or cosine curves, we could do it as well, with the same period but different phase shifts. If we were gonna do cosine, we would be doing the real part of these numbers, but everything else is the same.